Okay, uh, good afternoon. Already I can say it. Um, uh, thank you for inviting me. I'm going to talk about uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy to induce angiogenesis and regeneration of nerve fiber in traumatic brain injury. Uh, for those of you uh, that have been in the RSNA in Israel, it will be the same lecture, so sorry for the repetition, but now you will remember better what uh, HBOT can do. Um, I won't take all your time, but I'm sure that you will be happy to have an early lunch, so uh, it will be around 15 or 20 minutes. So I have no conflict of interest. Uh, hyperbaric, oxygen, uh, um, hyperbaric oxygen chamber used for traumatic brain injury. Traumatic brain injury has become a major public health concern. And as you know, 75 to 90% of traumatic brain injury cases are defined as mild TBI. The post-concussion syndrome is a common sequela of a traumatic brain injury, as is most common described in the setting of mild TBI. The clinical symptom of mild TBI is headache, dizziness, fatigue, vertigo, and neuropsychiatric syndrome like behavioral uh, changes and mood changes and confusion. Until 90% of the cases, symptoms resolve in 7 to 10 days, but in 20% of the cases, symptoms may continue for weeks or even a month due to metabolic and structural brain damage. The 32% of the patient develop permanent brain injury and experience what we call persistent post-concussion syndrome. Uh, mild TBI is associated with diffuse axonal uh, microvascular damage and cognitive impairment. The classical anatomical brain imaging such as CT and MRI have poor sensitive to pathophysiology of the effect of mild TBI. So TBI and actually in most of the cases they are normal. The CT is normal and the Conventional MRI is also normal. We use novel imaging technique. It, uh, it's diffusion tensor imaging, as you all know, and it can demonstrate axonal injury and secondary gliosis with local microvascular injury. We also use perfusion dynamic susceptibility contrast MRI, the, D, the DSCE, that can demonstrate, as you know, reduced global and regional cerebral blood flow, as well as cerebral blood volume. Mild TBI treatment, we know that in most pharmacological and non-pharmacological treatment have no, uh, uh, no effect or have limited effect on mild TBI. The hyperbaric oxygen uh, therapy has demonstrated clinical promising in stroke patients. There is increase in angiogenesis and brain plasticity that it with widely accepted mechanism by which this thought to occur in animal model and in stroke patient model. And this is our uh, hyperbaric oxygen chamber in our hospital, Asafa Rofe Medical Center. It's called the Sagol Center for Hyperbaric Medicine and Research. This is the chamber, this is how it looks like. And actually, this chamber can have 20 persons uh, uh, together. And this, we have two chambers like this. This is actually the largest uh, um, hyperbaric oxygen a, um, a center in the world and we can treat 40 patients at the same time. In this way we are globally unique, as, a, as we said we are the largest one. And we can treat over 160 patients on a daily basis. The Hyperbaric Med Medicine and Research Center in Asafa Rofe deal with a few Problem. First, there is a convention indication, as you know, for air emboli, the compression sickness for diver, gas, gangre gas uh, 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 gangrene, and also diabetic food, ischem ischemic uh, changes due to acute injury, compartment syndrome, as you know, used, uh, we use hyperbaric oxygen treatment, uh, osteomyelitis, and other indications. But there was also the new indication. The new indication that we use today, uh, hyperbaric oxygen treatment, is for stroke patient, for traumatic brain injury patient, also for fibromyalgia, uh, with uh, patient with chronic uh, uh, pain syndrome, and for patient with anoxic brain uh, damage. The new and newer indication that was 
publish in all the TV in Israel is what we call rejuvenation. And this is for elderly patients, patients that are around 70, between 70 to 80 years old, that want to improve their uh, memory, and especially the short time memory. And we also have a very nice uh, result for improving the short time memory. And also there is a few other side effects like uh, improvement of impotence in men, improvement the, um, the the skin, kind of uh, saving money from a facelift and all these uh, other uh, side things that we have from hyperbaric oxygen uh, chamber treatment. But today I will concentrate in traumatic brain injury, not in uh, all the other things. So actually what it does do, the, when we sit in the hyperbaric oxygen chamber, what happens? The pressure increase for two atmospheres, that's what we use. So the volume, as you know, boils low, it's decreased. And there is more molecular space. Another thing that happened is the guard's particle pressure increase. So the solubility, the Henry law, it's also increased. And then there is more molecule per solution. The air pressure increase allow consumption of more oxygen by the lung. So what it does do? Recent studies suggest that HBOT can induce neuroplasticity in patients with chronic neurological impairment due to stroke or traumatic brain injury. The HBOT has shown promising in increasing angiogenesis and brain plasticity in animal model and also in human stroke patients, and this is from our prior articles. How it's work? First, there is improvement on mitochondrial function by increasing the ATP uh, and uh, more molecules of ATP are created. Then there is increase or improvement in, cel in, in cel cellular metabolism because of increase of the ATP. Also there is um, improvement of the integrity of the blood-brain barrier and also improvement in inflammatory reaction. It's reduced apoptosis alleviate oxidant strait, and also increase level on neurotropin and nitrate oxidase. It's also upregulate axonal guided agent. The purpose of our prior study, the uh, first study, was to assess the neurotherapeutic effect of hyperbaric oxygen chamber treatment in patients that's suffering from prolonged post-concussion syndrome due to TBI using a novel brain microstructural imaging. Uh, we have in the first uh, study 15 uh, subjects with mild TBI and there were 6 to 27 years from the injury, okay? With the mean years after injury is 10 years. They are not immediate after injury. It's the mean year is 10 years after injury. The treatment includes 60 sessions of 90 minutes in HBOT, in the hyperbaric oxygen chamber, for two atmospheres of 100% oxygen for five days a week. And then we did an MRI before and after treatment. And this is the study design, MRI treatment, treatment one month before, then they sit in the hyperbaric oxygen chamber, and then we did another MRI after one month from finishing the treatment. We use the conventional MRI protocol, T2, T1, FLARE, DW, SWI, and we do also DTI and DSC, the D dynamic susceptibility contrast enhance. We use also, co uh, we use also the Neurotrax uh, Corporation for cognitive function. We assess by a, a Neurotrax computerized cognitive test. The DTI calculation and fiber tracking was performed by DTI Explorer, the DC analysis by WISE Imaging Software, and the spatial normalization and statistical analysis by SPM Software. The cognitive assessment include all these lists, as you see, memory, uh, problem solving, uh, information proceeding speed, finger tapping, and a, a visual task. Our results have four components. First, I will talk about the fraction anisotropy and the mean diffusivity changes. Then I will talk about the, the characterization of FA changes. Then about CBF and CBV, and the neurotherapeutic effect by the clinical side of the neurotract result. So this is our result for the FA. Uh, on DTI analysis. This is the st statistical analysis of the FA from all the patient brain. And as you know, 
fraction FA או fraction anisotropy is the summary measure of microstructural integrity and the lower it is, it means the integrity of the cell are better. So here you see the red area and the yellow area is the area where there is a significantly statistical improvement and decrease of the FA. And you see it especially in the frontal cortex and the temporal cortex, also in the centrum semiovale in the white metal trunk. Another thing we look is the mean diffusivity. The mean diffusivity is the inverse measurement of membrane density sensitive to cellular edema and necrosis. And we see in the whole patient brain significantly decrease in mean diffusivity in the DTI analysis. And here you can see the red area that are significantly decreased in mean diffusivity, also in the same area or the, the frontal and the temporal area and also in the centrum semiovale and subcortical white matter, there is a decrease of mean diffusivity, mean that there is less edema and necrosis. We look also in the fraction and in the uh, uh, tractography in the long association tract of the corpus callosum and the cingulum and we can see uh, much more fibers after treating with AGBOT, and uh, this is before treating, treatment, and this is after treatment, and you see the improvement in the tractography or the fiber tracking after HBOT treatment, especially in the corpus callosum and also in the uh, uncinate uh, process that are all connected with uh, memory and, uh, and um, special in memory. When we look on the CBF and CBV, the cerebral blood flow and the cerebral blood volume, and we look before treatment and after treatment, we did also delta map. The delta map is the subtraction from the after treatment, before treatment, and the red area and the CBF delta map and the CBV delta map show you the increase of the CBF and the CBV after treatment. And if we're looking here again, we see that the red area, especially in the frontal and temporal area, showing there is a significantly improvement in CBV and CBF. And this is the other, um, um, and this is the other map for the CBF and CBV. And there is also from the whole, uh, 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 the whole brains of the patient, looking on the delta map. And this is the CBF increasing in red, this is the CBV increasing in um, green, and the CBF together with the CBV increasing in yellow. And here you can see again, especially in the temporal and frontal uh, lobe, also gray matter and white matter increasing of CBV and CBF. When we look on this, uh, the cognitive improvement, we see a significant improvement after hyperbaric oxygen chamber, first in the global one, that, and this is all the component of the uh, global uh, cognitive uh, task. We see improvement in memory, especially in the short time memory, executive function, and uh, process information processing speed uh, uh, task visual and also motor skill, they are all uh, improvement and all uh, account to uh, global improvement of cognitive, uh, of cognitive tasks, especially in the short time memory. In conclusion, hyperbaric oxygen chamber may induce cerebral angiogenesis and recovery of brain microstructural in patients with chronic cognitive impairment due to TBI even months to year after acute injury. It can be even 27 years after the injury. And increased brain fiber integrity correlate with improved cognition. The mechanism by which hyperbaric oxygen chamber induced brain neuroplasticity can be demonstrated by highly sensitive perfusion MRI and DTI, as I showed you before. And I would like to thank you very much uh, to invite me. And I invite you all to come and see our chamber, and maybe some of you will be interested in sitting on it, improving all this uh, memory function. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, 